Today I'm going to be showing you how to use a very important piece of survival equipment. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, especially those in regards to survival trapping, you probably know that I keep a gill net at the very bottom of all of my survival packs. And this is my gill net right here. Very compactable, less than half a pound, and here in just a little while we're going to be deploying it in this water source right here. Now if you don't know what a gill net is, that's pretty understandable. These things are illegal in most states, and uh, those states that they're not illegal in, they're heavily regulated. And the reason is that these traps can do a lot of ecological damage very quickly, especially left untended. So uh, it's more of a trap of necessity. You want to put it in your survival pack, but hopefully you're never put in a situation where you actually need to use it. Now this is going to stretch out about 75 foot. It's going to be about 4 foot deep and it makes a net barrier. Anything that brushes up against the net, tries to go through it, is going to get captured. It has all the floats, it has all the weights. I've got a couple of spar poles right here, but uh, the intent is to show you how it's set up and uh, kind of give you an idea. Just like an EpiPen or a uh, airbag, you want to have it in your gear, but hopefully, again, you never have a reason to use it. So let's go ahead and get started. Well, we have our net unpackaged, and we're heading out to a portion of the water that doesn't have uh, all this duckweed in it. Uh, duckweed is edible, definitely survival food, we'll talk about that later, but it is incredibly buoyant, and the moss that lives underneath it is going to keep this net from properly deploying. So we're just about ready to deploy our net. Now, there are two different knots that you're going to have to untie. Uh, one of them is going to be here on this main line. All right, this is going to have the majority of the largest line. It's going to go on top with the floats. And you also have a smaller monofilament holding your line. It's going to be your bottom line. It's got little weights on it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and untie those two. That's where things go really wrong. You want to make sure that you're out in the water, clear from uh, any obstacles, because uh, anything that's floating around, uh, especially grass and debris that you find on land, going to mess this guy up. Uh, you can get gill nets made out of all different kinds of materials, different sizes uh, to catch different kinds of aquatic life. But this is as cheap as you can go. Five, six bucks on eBay is all it's going to set you back. But uh, again, if you're in a survival situation, this is priceless. So uh, let's go ahead and start untying knots. Well, this is where the fun begins. We'll make sure that all the sticks are free and away from this. Happen. But you want to get the top tangle unwrapped from the bottom tangle first. So that you get a clear line from your weights to your floats. Go ahead and tie up the first piece of line so that I can untangle the rest of it. Hopefully, it all works out. Now this is uh, an issue you're going to have as you start to set these up, is that you might be so successful that uh, before you even gotten everything done, you start to catch fish. So, good sized minnows. So we're going to go ahead and leave those guys there for right now, and we're going to work our way down. Uh, as I do this, as you can see, we're catching more and more fish almost immediately. And I'm making sure that the uh, floats are on top, that the weights are stringing out below. And that is the main idea. Alright, so 
So our net's already starting to work pretty well. Now, as you secure this other side, you wanna make sure that you keep your lines tight. Uh, if you give it too much, the fish are gonna be able to wrap around even more and your net's going to be tangled uh, beyond repair. Now, because of the fragility of this type of net or this quality net, these are usually just one-time use nets. So you free up the fish, you catch everything you can, as long as you can, and uh, after that, you roll it up and you burn it or you uh, recycle it, you get it out of the waterway. Uh, otherwise, you can attempt to roll it up, but the only viable way I would say to reset this trap is to have such long poles that you can pull it straight out of the water, keep it above the water suspended. So let's go on through here and uh, let's take a look at some of the things that we've caught. We'll uh, free up these guys here in just a little while. But with a gill net, you never know. Uh, different sizes, different species, all kinds of stuff. Check out all those minnows. Now this will catch all different kinds of fish. Uh, catfish, <laughs> crawfish, even though they're not fish. Uh, sometimes bass get wrapped up in here. A lot of sunfish because of the barbs. But notice that we're catching mostly little guys. And that is because of the diameter of these squares. Again, you can purchase these or order them to size. And each size or diameter is going to be capable of catching different size fish. So, it's more of those bluegill in there. Now, that's not to say that you're not going to catch some really large fish and some strange things, especially when it comes to turtles, things like that. Uh, stuff will test your lines. Every once in a while, you get into a body of water, but you might have really big fish in. And when that occurs, you're just going to find holes in your line because they'll go right on through it. So this has a uh, limited application. It has limitations. So removal of fish from this net is pretty simple, especially looking at the, uh, the materials that you have. You simply break the net. Again, this is a disposable net, and it just kind of kind of comes apart just like that. And there's your bluegill, and just let them go free. Same thing with uh, these interesting minnows we keep on catching. So it should be pretty apparent just how successful these gill nets can be. Uh, before it's even done being deployed, it's already started to trap things. Now, it should also be very apparent just how dangerous one of these traps can be if left untended. And just how much ecological damage can be occurred in a very short amount of time. And uh, that's the issue. Now this needs to stay in your survival pack unless you absolutely need it. It needs to come down to the decision or the choice of starvation or putting one of these out. Um, that needs to be a choice that you make whenever you cross that bridge. Now, whenever you're done with this net, it is a one-time use only. Now, you need to go ahead and bundle it up, cut it up, burn it, recycle it, put it in a place that it can no longer catch any creatures of any kind. Because uh, that's the idea. We're going to take care of nature wherever we can. Now, if you're in a survival situation, where you do not have a water source that's capable of catching fish or being able to deploy this kind of net in that environment, uh, you do have the possibility, we're talking survival, of putting this on land, uh, up in the air, between bushes and trees, where it can catch bats and birds. And again, we are strictly talking survival. This is not advisable, would not be legal, but uh, Again, options are important to have. So the idea is that y'all now know a little bit more about gill nets. Though I hope that no one is ever in a situation where you have to make the call on whether or not to deploy such a device. But uh, knowledge is power. It's nothing like being prepared. So buy one, put it at the very bottom of your pack, and uh, peace of mind. Guys, like and subscribe. Hope you learned something. And as always... Till next time.